Welcome back. Hope everyone enjoyed lunch. My name is Ray Latif. I'm the managing editor of BevNet, as well as the host for this edition of the Startup Brewery Challenge, the ninth edition of the Startup Brewery Challenge, which is sponsored by Craft Brew Alliance. The Startup Brewery Challenge is Brewbound's one-of-a-kind business pitch competition for new and emerging beer companies. And for those of you in the audience who aren't familiar with how it works, here are the rules. Contestants will have four minutes to deliver their pitch and sample product to our panel of five judges. Following each presentation, our judges will have an opportunity to provide feedback to each brand and ask contestants additional questions. At the end of the competition, the entrepreneur with the best overall pitch and product will receive a $5,000 cash prize, which can be used to fuel the growth of their emerging business. The winning brand will also receive an all-expenses-paid trip to Portland, Oregon, where they will meet with Craft Brew Alliance executives, learn from the CBA team, brew a collaboration beer, and soak in everything that the Portland beer scene has to offer. So let's meet our judges. Starting from my left, we have Carmen Olson, who is the Director of Emerging Business Partnerships for Craft Brew Alliance, where she discovers and integrates strategic partners that leverage CBA's brewing and distribution expertise. Tom Bly is the Innovation Brewmaster for, for Craft Brew Alliance, where he leads a team of innovation brewers to create new products, explore new ingredients, and engage in brewing research and development. Next, we have Matt Bardill, who is the senior manager of the beer buying team at Total Wine & More, where he oversees the retailer's beer business across 21 states mm -hmm. and at over 170 store locations. Next is Kit Wanty Lambert, who is the VP of Marketing for o w <laughs> Incorporated, a Miller Coors and Craft Beer uh, distributor in Michigan. Last but not least, we have Martin Favela, who is the co-founder of San Diego's Border X, uh, Border X Brewing, which won Startup Brewery Challenge 7 last year. All right, let's get to our first contestant, who is Ted Fleming. Ted Fleming is the founder and CEO of Partake Brewing. Ted, come on up. Round of applause for Ted. <clears throat> so you can use uh, any mic. Your clicker is there, and your timer is over there. Thank you. Hello everybody, my name is Ted Fleming. I'm the founder and CEO of Partake Brewing. And at Partake Brewing, we make craft non-alcoholic beer that's alcohol free and beer lover approved. My journey with beer and brewing begins a little over 10 years ago. I was in my late 20s and really starting to get into the blossoming craft beer scene that was starting to take root in my hometown of Toronto. But unfortunately for me, that journey was cut short due to a diagnosis of Crohn's disease. Now, that diagnosis, in combination with becoming a father for the first time, really helped me to focus on my health and ultimately led to my decision to give up alcohol. But I really missed my beer. I missed the taste of it and discovering new beers. But more than those things, I really found that I missed the social connection that comes with sharing a drink with a colleague after a hard day's work, cracking beers with the guys in the locker room after hockey, and simply joining in to celebrate special occasions with family and friends. So I decided to try non-alcoholic beer. But most of what I tried tasted awful, and there was absolutely nothing in terms of variety. So I set out to change that. The market for non-alcoholic beer in North America is roughly $1 billion annually. But that represents just 1% of the overall beer market. Compare that to Germany, where 5% of all beer sold is non-alcoholic, and Spain, where that number exceeds 10%. Why the difference? I think it's because brewers there have been making quality product for a number of years and have helped to shed the negative stigma that still surrounds non-alcoholic beer here in North America. And that's where Partake Brewing comes in. Partake Brewing is going to bring all the things that make craft beer great to the non-alcoholic beer category, including taste, variety, authenticity, creativity, and especially passion. Our first product is a non-alcoholic IPA. We also have a lager and stout in development. And our IPA tastes fantastic. In fact, one craft beer writer recently had this to say, quote, in a category defined by palate-numbing blandness, Partake IPA offers something decidedly different, 
In a word, flavor. Not only have we hit the mark on taste, but our nutritionals are outstanding as well. All natural ingredients and only 10 calories per can. We launched the product on Kickstarter in April. We raised $30,000 in a 30-day campaign and followed that up with another 40,000 in pre-orders prior to our first commercial batch in August. Since then, we've had great traction into bars, restaurants, and retailers, and are expecting to be in Canada's largest beer rate retailer, the beer store, in early 2018. One of the reasons I'm here pitching today all the way from Toronto is that we're looking for strategic partners or joint venture partners to help bring manufacturing and or distribution to the table and help us bring our innovative product pipeline here to the United States and to U.S. consumers. I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention that we've been approached by several, several cannabis companies to partner on a non-alcoholic beer with a cannabis component. But if there's one thing I'd like you to take away from me being here today, it's this. People like me, the non-alcoholic beer drinker, we really want to participate and be part of the awesomeness that is the craft beer movement. Why? Because fundamentally, we're beer lovers, we're beer lovers too. So who's ready to partake? Thank you. Well done. Nicely done. All right. right. The knock on non-alcoholic beer has always been that it doesn't taste good. Tom, what do you think of Partake? You know, this one's tough. I want to like this product because this beer is catered to me in so many ways. As an aging uh, person in the industry, you find yourself wanting to drink lower ABV beers. I'd love to find an a, an a beer that was actually drinkable. This has more flavor, but it still doesn't execute in the perspective that it's still thin, and it still doesn't read as, as an IPA. It reads as hot tea. So even though it's an, an improvement, it kind of reads more like soda to me than it does NA. Yeah. Matt, what's the appetite like for non-alcoholic beer at Total Wine, and what's your take on Partake? Yeah, I think that, you know, like Ted said, it's definitely a, a smaller um, part of the business in the U.S. market. Um, I think that there is that customer, though, that you can kind of leverage that, that non-alcoholic customer that is looking for more choices, and I think... That's exciting because right now, to your point, there's not a lot of choices with any kind of flavor at all um, that this has. My question would be um, to Ted is, do you, yes, it's non-alcoholic, but what are the plans like leverage like the other health, like either the nutritional or the health benefits, not benefits, the health, you know, piece of the, of the beer? Is there somewhere there too to get, you know, a non-beer drinker to actually come in there, not because they don't want alcohol, but because they just want a, a healthier option when it comes to that, that, that taste profile? Yeah, I think we've, we have a lot of people using the product uh, as an after-sport uh, drink. We're, you know, we're trying to position it as, okay, well, let's, let's make your first beer after you play sports, uh, make it a partake, and you get the hydration, you get the low calories, you get the benefits of uh, the taste of beer, and then maybe you make your second, your second beer uh, sort of something you know, you, you've been historically drinking. So I think that's, that's an area where we can, we can insert ourselves as a, a healthy alternative, but still beer and still part of that experience after sports. Yeah. Carmen, uh, what do you think of the business strategy, Ted's presentation, and his uh, thoughts on partnerships? Um, great presentation. It was super dialed. I think that uh, what I really like about the way that you're approaching the, the business model is you're answering a question. When Cheryl was talking earlier, um, she said that she asks, and all of the folks at Nankasi ask, what problem are we trying to solve? And that was very, that showed up in a really big way in your presentation. I think that, you know, your first slide, I think, said problem. So I love that um, this model is addressing a very specific problem and answering a question for consumers. Um, so that, that to me is really promising. Um, I'm curious about, so the brand, the name seems to make sense. Um, I'm not sure that I understand the packaging design and what's happening in the, in the photo. Yeah, so the name, the name Partake comes from, so my background before developing this brand and product is, is an e-commerce store devoted to non-alcoholic beer and wine and cider. And one thing we found from doing that business is that 
you know, people come to the business who are similar to me, who have a, a medical condition, and that's why they've come away from alcohol. But there's also pregnant women, um, people who are in just a, a, a situation, they're the designated driver, or they're just taking a week off from alcohol or whatever. But the, the, the common thread amongst all those people is that they just want to participate and be part of the group and, and share a beer with their friends. And that came out in some of the other presentations earlier, that connection is a big part of um, what, uh, what beer drinkers gravitate towards, and that's, that's where Partake comes in, is we want to be much more inclusive uh, for beer drinkers into non-alcoholic as well as, so they can just participate and partake <coughs> with their friends. Kit, from a distributor perspective, what do you think of Partake? It definitely is something that we don't have in our portfolio and haven't seen, so that's very interesting. Everything you just and in the previous question answered, I'd like to see that on the package. So um, my guys are able to sell it in quickly, tell the story, and the consumer is able to look at the package and grab it based on that story. So in the picture, I love the non-alcoholic call out really big on the can. I love the low calorie content too, and the story about being included in the party still. So. Um, you're on your way with, with that on your can and in your message. Martin, you get the last word. Sure. Um, well, I mean, a lot of things already have been asked and answered, but I, I do like the, the concept of it. I think my only big question is, um, is, it, is Partake only gonna go and solve, well, it's a big problem to solve with the non-alcoholic aspect, but is Partake only gonna focus on the non-alcoholic or could it focus more on the very light beers, the very, um, uh, all the gluten-free solutions, so maybe like more solutions, not not just non-alcoholic. I don't know how big the market is, but I mean that could be something. I yeah. don't know if you've thought about that. As well. I could I could see f from a brand perspective us getting into to gluten-free because it's it's a similar health message, a similar message of inclusion. I don't know if if being just a, a lower alcohol version of the beer um, resonates with that same message. So I would say on the gluten side, we'd be potentially interested in that, but on just a lower alcohol beer, uh, I don't think so. Okay. All right, great feedback. Well done, Ted. Thanks so much. Thank you.